Julie Edge, Minister for Education, Sport and Culture. Uh, Minister, obviously you're meeting with the uh, Island Games panel this week. Uh, just tell us a bit about you know, why, why they're over. Okay, so the island put a bid in to host the Island Games and bring it back home in 2029. Um, so we put that bid in in Guernsey at the, at the last Island Games. And once you put that bid in, the um, committee then come over and do an inspection visit. So they've been on Ireland this week doing that inspection visit of the facilities that we can offer if they do choose to pick the Isle of Man to be that host in 2029. So we're just, um, for a bit of context, in the Sports Institute, so on the other side of the running track from the NSC. Would it be right to assume that most of the sport and most of the event, if it is held here, would be focused around the NSC? So a lot of the sports that are on the selection list to go forward for the Games are based, you know, the, the main facilities are at the NSC. Um, obviously there is football involved as well and there is only the one f f football pitch and it's an astro pitch down here so um, until the games are actually um, the, the disciplines of sport are selected um, you know I, cu I couldn't say which facilities would be utilised but the majority of the facilities required to host the games are based around the NSC. And the government's previously said it's about 2.4 million there or thereabouts at the minute obviously inflation will get to that um going forward what is that sort of money spent on is it going to need a uh, work at the nsc is going to need improvements around these facilities or yeah um obviously um the stadium and um the grandstand in in the athletic stadium um certainly hasn't had any work done to it so there will be investment required there and obviously we aim to make that sustainable and hopefully use some solar solar panels etc uh, to ensure that we we're looking at the latest sort of sustainable um, infrastructure but also there'll be works required on the athletics track um, there certainly could be works required for the astro pitch and for the bowl um, but certainly that 2.4 million is for, for investment in the infrastructure and, and the real aim of that with any sort of sporting event is to leave a legacy and um, ensure that there is um, the facilities there for the future. Well, well that's part of this because there is no two ways about it. You know, we've, we've heard it all. I mean, we, we are living in financially difficult times. We're, the Chief Minister basically said so as much and Tim Wald this week about heading towards the budget next year. How can, what guarantee can the government offer up that this money is going to be well spent on more than just a for want of a better word, an elongated sort of sports event that will last a couple of weeks and then years down the line, what? how can you guarantee there will be that legacy? So obviously the stadium, um, you know, if, if you go outside and, and film it, um, it certainly is in need of work and um, that's certainly important. But also our athletics track, um, obviously with it, with it being the surface there it is, it has to be to competition standard and um, obviously that's where the investment goes is to make sure you are up to the standards required to host the international island games and um, the legacy that will be there to you know the aim of any games and it's classed as the friendly games is to inspire future generations and um, get the major as much many people from the community involved we will be looking for 1200 volunteers to help us host the event if we are successful with that bid and um, just in terms of the infrastructure of hosting the games because obviously it does rely beyond government powers it does rely on businesses and the community to buy into that how do you think you know can you um, what sort of benefit will this bring to the arms so the economy especially the hospitality sector which has had difficult days and the arms as a whole really so, so we've estimated it. You know, it could be in the region of of three million pounds that um, we'll bring into the economy. There could be up to four thousand people here, um, and certainly, you know, we we hold big events. We hold hold motorsport events, and um, we know we can accommodate that amount of people. But it certainly will be in our accommodation. Um, obviously, that's part and parcel. So, what what we will have to do our next steps now, if we are successful with the bid, once that's announced in July from the annual general meeting of the um, IIGA, um, we would then have to set up a committee and put um, that committee in place to make sure that we are 
moving forward. It will. It does take a long time to organise. It's not something that you can do um, within a 12 month period. You know, it will be two, three years planning and ensuring that all those logistics are in place because you need somebody to manage transport, you need somebody to manage accommodation, and then obviously the, the there's obviously the food element and the hotels and that. So. Um, there will be a committee put together and um, there will be a lot of people involved and you know hopefully all of our businesses will get the opportunity to, to be part of it. We're representing the 24 member islands of the International Island Games Association and we are here to make sure that everything Isle of Man has said that they will have in place for becoming a host in 2029 is for real. So we're actually here to like work together with Isle of Man in order to produce the best ever games in 29. And what's the process like in getting uh, in going for the Island Games? So an island wants it, how does how do they get in touch? How do they how do they go for the Island Games? Firstly they have to be a member of the association. We do have 24 members today. Half of them are capable of hosting the games. We do not have a bidding process, we have a negotiating process instead where those islands who, have, who are interested in becoming a host contact us and they're explaining their interest and they uh, show that they have, for example, political support, that their venues are good enough and that they have the accommodation and transport and health and security in place. When then that has happened, they will first become a, f a preferred bidder which is the case for Isle of Man for the moment. By being a preferred bidder for 2029, they will then be the only one who delivers a bid. And if the bid is good enough, they will then be nominated as the host island for 29. And that will happen the incoming summer in Orkney, where the annual general meeting is. And the Isle of Man venues, you've had a little look around and seen a few of them. What do you think about the venues and do you think the Isle of Man's up to scratch for hosting it in 2029? They are. And we've seen the investment programme going on where there are new venues built, where there are older venues being renovated and upgraded. We see the determination from the government to make sure that all the venues are up to standard. We've seen the NSC, which is actually a jewel in any island. It's one of the very best sports centres that we ever seen within the member islands that we have. And it's sort of a role model for many others, where you have many different sports within the same venue and you have all everything else that goes with it. And what would you say to the Manx public, the people of the Isle of Man, if they're a little bit sceptical skeptical about spending money on something like this, how would you say it's important to host such events like this? It's not a matter of spending money, it's a matter of investing in the future. Every island, every community gains from making their community feeling uh, insp inspired, enthusiastic, uh, to become a host or many others that comes in. The games, when, when the Island Games, when, when it comes to the Isle of Man 2029, will be larger than the Winter Olympics, very likely. So it's a huge event. And when building a future, it's important to have brave uh, citizens along you. Yeah. And the Island Games is one of the very, very best investments that you could ever do. It is money in, but it's more money out, and furthermore, it's a community that will be stronger after the Games than before it. And a little bit away from the Isle of Man, but just the Games in general, how important are the Games for you, and how important do you think they are for the, the islands to not just host them, but take part in them, and for all the people to get behind it? Do you think how important are the Games to you? That's a difficult question. You can't measure what is more important actually. But having been around since the time before the Island Games started in 1985 in Isle of Man, where islanders truly struggled in order to find competition in different sports, we can see how venues all over the world in our member islands have been built 
have been improved, have uh, grown. We have seen how competitors, sports people on all our member islands are much, much stronger and better today than they were before the island games in 1985. And all that together meaning has, has had the, will mean that the citizens on the different islands, they are stronger and they are more prepared for any challenge that would arise. So when, when dealing with sport and see that you can compete in that one, that will encourage you to take further steps. And finally, you touched on the NSC and how great the NSC is. Is there any venues that you've looked at and maybe you think they could do that could do with a bit of extra work on the Isle of Man? And obviously there's plans in place to look at certain places. I know there was talks of the st stadium getting a bit of an upgrade because it needs a bit of uh, extra revenue. Is there anywhere in particular you think needs to be targeted at, looked at to maybe improve before 2029? Everything. We're dealing with development. We're never pleased. As no sports, no competitor, no sportsman, no human, no community, no island should ever be. We're never compliant. We always want to be a little bit better. That's what we do and that's who we are.